Today we are going to learn about number system. Look at the shepherd and the marks behind him. Many years ago, people used such kind of marks for counting. They are known as tally marks. The shepherd had limited number of sheep, so he could use tally marks. But what if he had these many sheep? Do you think it would have been possible to count using tally marks? No. Such marks were not sufficient. As a result, the 10 digits 1, 2, 3 till 9 and 0 came into the picture. Using their combinations, 1 digit, 2 digit, 3 digit numbers and so on started getting formed. Even today, we use these numbers for counting. They are called counting numbers or natural numbers. We denote this collection by taking the first letter of natural, that is N. Now, how can we show natural numbers on a line? Easy. Just draw a line. Mark the points at equal intervals. The smallest natural number is 1. So, the leftmost point will show 1. Then go on labeling the points as 2, 3, 4 and so on. But, up to which number? 1000, 10,000. 1 lakh? No. We can go on and on. On adding 1 to the last number, we will get its successor. Then again the last number will have a successor. This process is endless. So, we have infinitely many natural numbers. That is why we can use natural numbers to count or represent objects in a huge quantity. For example, number of grains in this heap. But, can they represent a quantity which does not exist? For example, if Raju eats 4 out of 4 chocolates, how many will remain? Its answer is 4 minus 4. We can't write its answer using natural numbers. Here we need one more number, that is 0. The collection of all natural numbers and 0 is called the collection of whole numbers. The set of whole numbers is denoted by letter W. So, 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on are whole numbers. On the number line, 0 lies to the left of 1. We know that 9 minus 7 is equal to 2. Now, what is 7 minus 9? Do we have its answer in the set of whole numbers? No. There is no whole number which is equal to 7 minus 9. This means we need some more numbers that is negatives of natural numbers. So, natural numbers, their negatives and zero are collectively called as integers. The set of integers is denoted by capital letter Z. Now, let's take a mirror and keep it on this zero on the number line. You will see the mirror image of the number line. Numbers to the right of zero are natural numbers. They are positive integers. Then, Numbers to the left of 0 are negative integers. So, let's change them as minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. Here we can see that numbers go on decreasing from right to left. Now, let us see an interesting fact about them. Look at 1 and minus 1. 1 is the smallest positive integer. What about minus 1? Is it the smallest negative integer? No, it is the greatest negative integer. Now our collection of numbers is doubled, but still it is not sufficient to find some quantities. For example, Raj has one apple. He cut it into four parts and ate one of them. How much part of the apple is left? We cannot give its answer in integers. Here we need fractions. They tell us about the part of a whole. In our example, one out of four parts is eaten. This means three out of four parts remain. 1 out of 4 and 3 out of 4 can be written as 1 upon 4 and 3 upon 4 respectively. Part above the line is called numerator and that below the line is called denominator. Denominator gives total parts of a whole, whereas numerator gives parts used or taken. In this example, 4 will be the denominator and 1 and 3 will be the numerators. Hence, Fractions are written in the form A upon B, where B is not equal to 0. Fractions are mainly of two types. Fractions 
in the form a upon b are called vulgar fractions for example 3 upon 4 1 upon 4 7 upon 9 etc while there are some fractions having denominators 10 100 1000 and so on that can be written using a point they are known as decimal fractions for example 7 upon 10 is equal to 0.7 then 118 upon 100 is equal to 